In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw a night sky scene using Python's turtle module. As you see in the picture on the screen at the moment, it's an example of what it's roughly going to look like. We're going to be throwing um, stars randomly onto the page and then a moon over the top. Um, so let's get started now by heading over to our Python editor. And the first line of code that we're going to throw in is from turtle import star. What this line of code does is accesses the module of code or the library of code called turtle. That's just some code written by somebody else. And we're going to import everything from that library. And that means we've got access to all the functions that will allow us to draw on the screen using Python code. So that's the first one. The second library of code or the second module that we want to access is called random. So we're going to go from random import now I'm not going to import everything here, I'm just going to import one function called randint, which is short for random integer. And I'll explain what's going on there later on, but basically by accessing this function, it allows us to randomly scatter stars on the page. Okay, so that's all our modules imported. The first thing I'm going to do is put in a comment here and write page setup. I'm just going to set our page up before we get into the nitty gritty of the coding. First thing I want to do is set my page size to 800, 500. That's 800 pixels width and 500 pixels height. I'm going to set my speed to zero, so that means we are drawing at the quickest speed possible. And the last thing I want to do is just set the background color. So we call it the BG color function. And in brackets and quotation marks, we write in black. That's the color of the night sky. I'm going to save that before I go any further, I'll just call it Night Sky, and just give it a run to make sure everything's working properly so far. And it is. We've got our page that's 800 across and 500 down, and we've got our BG color, which is our background color, set to black, and that's looking good. So page setup's done, um, sky's drawn, what we need to do now is start adding some stars to our sky. Now as I said before, we're going to be scattering multiple stars around the sky here. So instead of writing the code for each individual star time and time again, we're going to simplify things by using a function. Now, if you don't know what a function is, a function is just a little snippet of code that we can reuse multiple times, over and over again, basically. And it just saves us having to write the code multiple times. So let me explain. I'll start um, coding it up and I'll show you what I mean. We start making a function by writing DEF, which stands for define. We're defining a function, and we give our function a name. You can name it anything, but it's good to give it a meaningful name. So since we're drawing a star in this case, let's define our function as star. At the end, you put an open bracket and a closed bracket and a colon, and when you press enter, your mouse cursor will be indented, just showing that the code you're about to write below it is part of this function. So what we do now is put in the code to draw a single star. So I'm going to put in the color first of all, that is yellow. I want this star to be filled in, so I'm going to turn my fill on by calling it the begin fill function. And then I'm going to draw the star using a loop. So I'm going to write for i in range 5, as it's going to be a 5 pointed star. And all I do is go forward 10 steps and turn right at 144 degrees. And those two lines of code are repeated five times to get me the five-pointed star. Just jump out of that loop at the end there and write in end fill just so that it does close off um, our fill color. And that's it. That little snippet of code there is part of the star function. So instead of rewriting these six, yeah, six lines of code time and time again to draw, say, 20 or 30 stars on our page, all we need to do is mention this star bracket bracket. And as soon as the computer sees this, it knows to run all of this code. Okay, it'll make more, more sense in a moment once we actually call this function up. If we were to run this code right now, no stars would appear yet. Okay, while well, we have told the computer this is how you create a star, we haven't actually told the computer to start putting them on the page yet. Okay, so that's what we're about to do now. I've got to put in some comments here, so I'll just say function to draw one star and the next bit of code is um, draw multiple stars at random locations on the screen okay 
So this is where it gets a little bit confusing, but not too bad. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a loop. So instead of writing the word star like 20 times, what I'm going to do is just let a loop do that work for me. So for I in range, say 20, let's just start with 20 stars on the screen. You can always up that number to 30 or 40 if you want more stars or make it a bit lower if you want less stars. And if I write star bracket bracket, that would send the computer back up to this function and it would run this code here. And it would run that code 20 times. If I was to run it now, it's not going to work very well. It just does it all in the same place. But it is drawing 20 stars. You can see it working away there. They're just all on top of each other at the moment though. So what we need to do is tell the computer how to move around the screen to randomly scatter stars throughout the page. And that's where this randint function is going to come in handy. Okay, so back in our loop here. I'm going to make a gap before we draw the star. What I want to do is set up two variables, the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So I'm going to call them x and y. So x equals and y equals. Let's start with the x coordinate for the first star. Okay, the x coordinate. So where do we want to stick this star on our page um, on the x axis? Well, I'm going to get the computer to randomly pick a location by using the randint function. And then in brackets, I'm going to write minus 400 and then 400. So it's going to look along the x-axis, somewhere between minus 400, which is the very left-hand edge of the page, and all the way over to the right-hand edge of the page, which is 400 um, on the x-axis. And it's randomly going to choose an integer between those two numbers. And that's the location of our first star. Now for the y-axis, that's the up and down axis. We're going to do something similar. Just need to change the numbers a bit though to minus 250 and then 250. Okay, minus 250 is the bottom of the page, 250 is the top of the page. So the computer is going to look somewhere between the bottom and the top of the page and randomly select an integer. And that will be the y coordinate for our first star. So basically what this little section of code here, these two lines are doing is setting up the x and y coordinates at random locations somewhere on our page. Just realize I've got a typo there. Okay, now if I was to run that, it's still going to do the same thing where it just draws straight on top of one another. Okay, what I need to do is a little bit more code to actually move um, to a new location each time we draw a star. Because at the moment, it chooses these two coordinates, then it's just stuck there, and it draws the star another 20 times stuck at those coordinates. So what we need to do, is actually lift our pen up and we go to x comma y and put our pen back down. So each time we run this loop it's going to go to a new set of x and y coordinates. I reckon if we give that a go we might see something a little bit different. There we go. So you can start to see the computer randomly choosing locations for our stars. They will be somewhere between minus 400, which is the left-hand edge of the page, and 400 on the right-hand edge of the page, somewhere between minus 250, which is the bottom of the page, and 250, which is the top of the page. Okay, sometimes they look good, these stars. Sometimes, like these ones here, look a little bit dodgy because they overlap each other, but you get the idea. And if I wanted to add less stars, say five stars, we could do that. There's five stars. If you wanted to add 50 stars, just change this number here. It's so easy. So you can see that would go on for quite a while, adding 50 stars onto the page. So that would look all right as well. But I'm just going to stick with 20 stars for now to keep things simple. Oops. So what we've got now um, are the stars randomly scattered throughout the sky. Last thing we need to do now is put the moon in. So let's put in a comment that says moon... Right, part one. It's going to be two parts to this moon. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Oops. First thing I'm going to do is put the pen up. And I'm going to go to a new set of coordinates somewhere towards the top left. So I might go, um, let's say, minus 300, comma, 100. That'll put me up towards the top left-hand corner. Once I'm in position, I'll put the pen down. 
I'll select my color if I'm changing from yellow, which I am, so I'm going to go to white. If you just want to stick with yellow, just leave that line of code out. I'm going to begin the fill because I want this filled in with color. And I'm going to draw a circle at about size 50. And I'll end the fill once it's drawn. Now, if we give that a run, it's going to draw the 20 stars first, which is a little bit annoying to wait for, but it won't take too long. And it draws us a moon in the sky. Not the best looking moon though. The way you can make a moon look a little bit better is just overlap another circle over this that's the same color as your sky, so black. And it'll look like the moon's actually been cut away. I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to copy and paste that moon code that I just put in because it's going to be fairly similar. I'll just change the comment to say moon part 2. And I'm going to change the go to coordinates here to minus 280 for the x value. And I'm going to change the color that we're using from white to black so it matches my background. And that should be enough to make a decent looking moon. So again, the 20 stars get drawn first, and we'll get a white circle, and then a black circle over the top of it, which just cuts away some of that moon. And that looks pretty cool. It's basic, I know, but you could always add a lot more to this to jazz it up. But that's how you would simply draw yourself a night sky using Python code.